William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. One nice thing about being a murderer, you don't have to worry about being included in the old age pension fund. You're not going to have an old age. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. I was drinking myself to death this particular evening. Not liquor. At Willie's Wagon, it's the coffee that's fatal. Also, I was finding out from the newspapers that chorus girls were still busy suing elderly millionaires, that a hood named Ben Moran had knocked off an armored car and disappeared, and that the police were questioning his girlfriend, Penny Lane. Her picture was spread across the front page. It, it wasn't art, but it would sell a lot of papers. Also, we were going to have some more weather. That don't surprise me. That's because you're a cynic, Willie. Do I ask you about your religion? It was around 10.30 at night. But it looked later for the girl who came into the wagon as though it was the last stop on a trip she hadn't planned on making. Excuse me, but... Can you tell me if there's more than one hotel maker? The well, only one I know of is around the corner from here. You tried a phone book? Yes, I did. I... I must be going insane. Hey, hey, Mr. Craig. I've got it. She passed out. Yeah, take her in the back room. I got the couch there. That's fine. Hey, sounds like she's coming, too. Get some coffee for her. Yeah, okay. I... I'm sorry. What about? Fainting. My name is Wilson, Myra Wilson. I'm Barry Craig. What's bothering you about the Meeker? You... You won't believe me. Oh, I'm a confidential investigator. I've got a lot of practice believing people. Clients, usually. Try me. Well, m my husband and I got to town this afternoon. We took a room at the Hotel Meeker. After lunch, I went shopping into a movie. Then I went back to the hotel. It, it looked the same. Hotels don't change much in an afternoon. But when I asked at the desk for my husband, the clerk said... No one by that name was registered. The clerk must have remembered you. No. He said he'd never seen me before. It was a nice story. It had shape, surprise, a, a nightmare touch. The odds were wonderful that it was a pony from the word go. Maybe that's why I walked over to the Hotel Mika with Myra Wilson. Uh, good evening, sir. Mrs. Wilson would like the key to her room. Mrs. Wil... Oh, back again, eh? Mrs. Wilson does not have a room here. She checked in this morning with her husband. She doesn't have a room here. Neither does her husband, if she has a husband. I could take you apart without any trouble. Putting you together again might be harder. Look, there's no card for Mr. and Mrs. Wilson. I never saw or heard of Mrs. Wilson before. I've been on duty all day. I ought to know... Mrs. Wilson, uh, you remember the lobby, uh, the clerk? Of course I do. What was your room number? 312. Let's go take a look at it. No, you can't do that. Why not? Oh. That gun standard hotel equipment? Ollie, will you? Hmm? What are you doing with that gun? Taking care of this hoodlum, Mr. Roberts. The hoodlum's name is Craig. This is Mrs. Wilson. You manage the hotel? I do. Farley put away that gun... Mrs. Wilson, did you see Mr. Roberts this morning? No. Mr. Roberts, this woman claims she registered here this morning with her husband. That's not true. Evidently a misunderstanding, although... We'd I... like to go up to her room, 312. If it's not occupied, I see no reason why you can't. We went upstairs. The clerk, Farley, had been very tough. Mr. Roberts was very smooth. I didn't care deeply for either of them. I started hoping in earnest that Myra Wilson's story was true. Three twelves down the corridor. Mrs. Wilson, 
Would you mind describing the room? Well, there, there was a window over the courtyard, a, a double bed with a flowered cover, a dark green rug, and wallpaper, a yellow and blue, I think. Well, that's enough. 312. Well, says so on the door, too. Okay, open up. Oh, there's a bed. Outside of that, twin beds, not a double. Carpeting is maroon, not green. And the wallpaper, dark brown, striped. It, it, it's not at all the way I described it, but it, it is the same room it must be. Well, Mr. Craig, sorry to have bothered you. Let's go, Mrs. Wilson. We picked up my car and I started driving home. That gave me a small chance to think. First thought was I'd heard the story before, only that was about a girl in Paris in 1890 or thereabouts. She'd lost a hotel, too, along with her mother. The explanation there was that her mother had died of the plague and the whole thing was hushed up so people wouldn't be scared away from the city. That wouldn't work here. We don't have plagues anymore in New York. Which left what? I didn't know, but I thought it might be fun finding out. Now, uh, this is my house. And here's my key. Go on in and try to get some sleep. Where are you going? Believe it or not, I'm going to a hotel for the night. The hotel was the Mika. Oh, you again. It's coincidence. If you're still hopping on that Wilson business... I'm looking for a room to sleep in. We're all filled up. What about 312? I... Thanks, I'll take it. Mind showing me to the room? I'm not supposed to. But you'll do it for me. I'll do it for you. That is, uh, unless you wanted to check with Mr. Roberts first. Uh, he's gone for the night. <laughs> Could it be a federal offense? What? Kidnapping a room... I thought you gave up on that. Well, that's right, too. Uh, I forgot. Your room. Well, come on in. I don't have any... Hey, hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm ripping myself some wallpaper. It's great fun. Now, you cut that out. And look what I found under this striped wallpaper. More wallpaper. Guess what color? Oh, you don't like to guess? All right, it's blue and yellow wallpaper. The kind Mrs. Wilson described. Funny? You can't do things like... Like finding out this really was Mrs. Wilson's room? And that someone changed the wallpaper, the bed, the rug, while she was out shopping? Only one question. Where's Mr. Wilson? The clerk didn't answer that one anything else. I left the hotel for a doorway across the street. I put in time in nicer doorways, but this one was okay. It kept me out of sight. Until the clerk came out of the hotel and started walking. I walked after him. He led me to a dark street filled with discouraged brownstones. He started up the steps. I was maybe 30 yards from him when he opened the door and... <laughs> Walked into bullets. He must have been dead before he fell. All the bullets had hit him. When I got to him, it was only to confirm the obvious. I had news. I needed somebody to tell it to. Roberts was in the phone book. I always track down people that way. Maybe not very smart, but it nearly always works. Yes? Oh, Mr. Craig. Mind if I come in? Well, it's late, but uh, well, come in. Thanks. Uh, don't go any further. I'm entertaining. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello? I asked you not to... Go. I said I was sorry. Now I'm not sure. Introduce me. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Craig, Miss Lane. 
Penny Lane? Penny Lane. What do you hear from Ben Moran, Miss Lane? Oh, now, you mustn't believe everything you read in the papers. Oh, it's too bad. You mean he isn't going to give you a hunk of that armored car? What would I do with an armored car, Mr. Craig? Oh, I see what you mean. Excuse me. Roberts, where's Jim Wilson? Who is Jim Wilson? Myra Wilson's husband. Oh, that poor deluded girl. Not deluded. Someone changed the wallpaper in the room she had. Underneath was the paper she described. Oh? I can't imagine why or, or who would... Try anyway. Farley's really the one to ask. He's in charge of such things. Oh, I asked him. He said he takes orders from you. I'm afraid he's lying, Mr. Craig. Would you like to tell him that? I should like nothing better. Because you know he's dead? Mr. Craig, I don't think I have anything further to say to you. Too bad. I was enjoying our little chat. Good night, Mr. Craig. I suppose you need time for rehearsal. Rehearsal of what? Your story to the police. Polly was murdered. You know, I'm not surprised. Apparently, he was involved in something crooked. Is that so? Uh, why, yes. Uh, checking Mr. and Mrs. Wilson in, then denying he'd done so. Uh, having the room changed while they were out. Uh... It's going to be all Farley from now on, huh? I'm afraid he wasn't an honest man. Anyway, from now on, he's going to be a silent one. You can load anything you like on him. But you've got to make it stick, Roberts. Otherwise, it won't mean anything. Good night. Mr. Craig? Yes? Mind if I come with you? No. That's nice. Night, Mr. Robert. You know, Mr. Craig, uh, what's your first name? Barry. Mm, nice. Call me Penny, please. Penny. Ooh, that's even nicer. But anyway, I was saying... I don't think Mr. Roberts is really a gentleman. Now, that's hard to believe. Oh, I'm very serious. Well, you ought to know. Oh, Barry, you, you mustn't misunderstand. I've, um, I've never been up to his apartment before. You were there tonight. Well, that was because Mr. Roberts said he had some beautiful etchings, and I love etchings, so... But you know what? What? There wasn't a single etching in the place. <laughs> We got into my car and drove away. Penny was a very beautiful woman who sounded like a half-wit and wasn't. She was putting on the Paris and springtime routine, pretending she'd fallen for my manly beauty, but uh, she wanted something from me, and it wasn't love. What it was, I hoped I'd find out. Ben Moran must have been a rough playmate. I don't know why you keep talking about him. He fascinates me. Wanted by the police for a few murder raps, swindles, armed robberies, income tax evasions, passing a red light. Ben would never pass a red light. Oh, sorry. Apology accepted. Take me home. Where? 27 Carlton Drive. Okay, that's only a couple of blocks over. Penny. Hmm? The moon's still beautiful. The night's young. The air is filled with the fragrance of flowers. Uh, where's Ben Moran nowadays? I used to be a friend of his. I'm not anymore. If you don't believe me, ask the police. And I hate you. So kindly shut up. Yes, ma'am. Well, you're home. Thank you. Oh, before you go, Penny, there's something I have to ask you. What? Who told you to play Matahari with me? Play what? Beautiful female spy. I think you're absolutely insulting. I said you were beautiful. Good night. I watched Penny walk into her apartment house and then drove away. I thought about her. She was angry, a liar, and the kind of girl who'd go very good on most desert islands. But I didn't have one. So I went home. When I got there, though, I wasn't happy. Myra Wilson was gone. Whether she'd gone on her own or had been persuaded was something I might find out sometime or other. It was a cold trail, and I decided I'd try to warm it up a bit. The first step was driving uptown to Robert's house, parking opposite it, and using the phone booth in an all-night drugstore. 
I had no guarantee the gimmick would work. I didn't have much choice. Yes? Ben, I can't say anything over the phone, but come over right away. Who'd you say you were? Ben. Ben Moran, you jerk. Right away. Goodbye. I figured the phone call, if Roberts didn't have too good an ear, would make things happen. I got back to my car and started waiting. Either Roberts was going to sit tight or he was going to make a move. To do me any good or to do Mr. and Mrs. Wilson any good, he'd have to make a move. Maybe he would. I kept on waiting. Roberts must have mistaken me for Ben Moran. He made his move. He got into his car, gunned it, and went away. So did I. Things were maybe picking up. We were across the river in Jersey up a dark road to a small house whose lights picked out pieces of the dark sky. I pulled up and stopped a ways down the road from the house. I watched Roberts get out, knock, and go inside. And then I started walking. I knew Roberts was in that house. I could be pretty sure a killer named Ben Moran was there. And who else? I could afford to wait and find out. That is, I had thought I could. The front door was closest. I didn't bother knocking. Hello. Mr. Craig. Oh, Mr. Craig. You better save it. There's no time. Over, over there near the fireplace. Uh-huh. Yeah. He, he's dead. He's dead. How did you get out here? Cab. At your house, I got a phone call from Jim. That's my husband. I got here, he let me in, said someone was trying to kill him. Someone did. You see who? The shots came from there. Yeah, a door, half a jar. Whoever was in the other room would have taken off as soon as he heard me come in. I, I can't really believe Jim is dead. Start practicing. He's dead. The only thing is, he's not really Jim Wilson. That new corpse, Myra, is Ben Moran. Went through his pockets, found nothing but small chain, called the nearest sheriff and got out with Myra. Why? How could it have... After his last job, Moran was hot. He had to hold up and pick your town for it. Married you under the name of Wilson. Maybe that was even his real name. He had a birth certificate. Then it was. Ben Moran was his uh, business name. Oh, I, I, I should have known long ago. He didn't work, but always had money. He hasn't got it anymore. But maybe robbers can tell us about things. The, the hotel manager? Sure. He knew Moran, helped Moran on that disappearing hotel routine. That was to get rid of you. Well, you better face up to it. Makes it easier to forget. I suppose so. Moran must have decided the time was ripe to start spending his dough. Had to get rid of you without the police being called in. Or even if they were called in, not believing your story. They wouldn't have. No. But maybe we'll get them one now they will believe. We made good time back to Robert's apartment house, but he'd made better. His car was there. And so was he. Mind if we come in? I mind. We're still coming in. Come on, Meyer. Uh, this rough stuff won't get you anywhere. It got us inside. How's Moran? Moran? Yeah, the man who phoned a couple of hours ago. I received no such call. Oh, stop. I made it. You? I wanted to meet Moran. I trailed you to his hideout in Jersey. Then answer your questions yourself. The police wouldn't. They'd ask you to answer them. Suppose you let me worry about them. You'd better. They're going to think you shot Moran. What for? Money. 
very convincing motive. I didn't kill him? Maybe I might believe you, but the police wouldn't. Not after I told them how you conspired with Moran to get rid of his wife. <laughs> you couldn't prove that. Because your clerk Farley's dead? Don't be so hopeful. Myra can tell her story. The original wallpaper is still on the walls of 312, underneath the new stuff you plastered on. You were around when Moran was killed. All of that would add up to a nice package for a jury. Uh, you, uh, you said you might believe me. I did. Who have you got in mind for the killing? Penny Lane. Uh, no use, Miss Lane. Uh, your perfume's too distinctive. Come on out of that room and join us, huh? Hello. I, uh, I was looking for an etching. You were looking for a lot of etchings with the Secretary of the Treasury's signature on them. I didn't find even one. Too bad. I'm sure Moran wanted you to have them. And I'm going to get them. Well, the gun loaded. Uh-huh. Barry, raise your arms. Why? I'm going to search you. You better not. I'm ticklish. Not that ticklish when there's a gun pointing at you. Well, maybe not. Well? You don't have the money. Nope. What'd you do with it? Gave it to Myra. Mr. Craig. I asked her to hold it for me. But... Uh, oh, it's no use, Myra. No use at all, dear. Give me that handbag. No. I'll take it. There. I'll open it, too. Barry. Hmm? You're a liar. I am? There's no money in Myra's bag. There's a gun, though. That's why I wanted you to take the bag away from her. That's why you... What? Sure. Myra is very good with a gun. But you... But she... Stop making noises and point your gun at Mrs. Wilson. She happens to have murdered the hotel clerk Farley and her husband as well. Girls maybe will be girls, but she wanted to be a killer. Myra was very quiet about it all. She said nothing. Even when the police came and took her away, she said nothing. She was waiting for a jury and hoping there'd be mostly men on it. I'll be glad to tell you what broke the case, Willie. I didn't ask you. Well, I've got to tell somebody. Now, look. Moran wanted to shake Myra, so he had Roberts and Farley pull the disappearing hotel stunt on her. But she got to Farley. Forced him to tell her where Moran was hiding out. Then killed Farley to make sure he'd stay quiet. I can recommend the hamburgers. Here? Nah, that new place down the block. Well, anyway, the, the, the way she gave herself away was she told me her husband had phoned her at my place, told her where he was hiding out in Jersey and so on. Well, Willie, how would her husband or anyone else have known that she was staying at my place? They serve it with a kind of coleslaw that ain't all bad. Isn't all bad? Willie, nothing can be all bad. Have another cup of coffee? My mistake. Anyway... Here I am, left without a case, without a fee, without... Hey, stop breathing down the back of my neck. Turn around and I'll breathe down the front of it. Oh, hello. Hello. But you can't say I'm left without a penny. have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator. Tonight's story, Nobody Lives There Anymore, was written by Louis Vitaze. Next week, it's the strange story of the moving target about which Barry Craig has this to say. In next week's story, The Moving Target, a high-flying globetrotter finds that sheer elbow room is no insurance for survival when a felonious blonde makes a passionate effort to bring him down to earth, really deep down, that is. The National Broadcasting Company has just brought you an NBC Radio Network production with William Gargan starring as Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator, directed by Andrew C. Love. Heard on tonight's cast were Jerry Hausner, Joan Banks, Stanley Farrar, and Doris Singleton. Join 
Groucho Marx for You Bet Your Life, tonight on the NBC Radio Network.